Hi everyone, if you're an existing subscriber, hello and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome and why not hit subscribe now? I'm your host, Alicia Vittoria Keen, and I've been interviewing inspirational people and businesses to find out how and why they inspire others. This week, I interviewed number one Diamond Cambridge Weight Plan consultant and businesswoman, Nikki Richardson. Here's how it went. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the channel. To begin with, if you could just introduce who are you and what do you do? Yeah, hi, Elise. My name is Nikki Richardson and I am a one to one diet consultant. So you now have over a team of 300 people. Where did your work ethic stem from? Wow. Um, crikey. Well, I started working when I was 13 years old, so I'm 50 in January. And I think I've always, I've come from a family that have worked, you know, we haven't been given anything on a plate. So uh, I think obviously my family have ingrained in me that you work. I wasn't, I wasn't given handouts at all. So from the age of 13, I used to work in a kennels. And I used to get five pounds for nine hours. Um, that was my very first job. And back in the days, of course, we could work at that age. And then I worked at B-Jams. I just had part-time jobs with school. So um, I left school and I joined a youth training scheme at 16. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just followed in my sister's footsteps. And I was a waitress and I worked at Boots as well. So I was doing seven days a week. Um, all through my training as a travel agent and then I worked my way up into management one day I just literally decided that I'd had enough and I got up and walked out which was very very irresponsible and I think I gave my mum and dad um, many grey hairs because I had a mortgage and I just walked out of my job <laughs> we'll talk about you walking out your job in a little while but first of all having three jobs isn't an easy thing to do how did you cope I didn't think about it I just did it I was on 25 pounds a week with my travel and that wasn't going to pay for anything I wanted to have I guess a social life and the only way to have a social life was to earn money so I I just did it I didn't I didn't think twice about it I've always been a hard worker so I do Monday to Friday as a YTS and then Saturday, I would do boots during the day. And then I'd work at Bernie Inn as a waitress. Well, I was a bar. I did bar work first. And then I became a waitress after. And I probably was doing shifts in the week as well. I've always been a workaholic all my life. Do you think that's what's led to your success now? The fact that you had a good work ethic from so early on? Yeah, I mean, I, I, th I do believe that being self-employed, I mean, when I was employed, I was a nightmare. I'd call in sick. Um, me and my friend would go out on a, on a Friday night. Well, no, actually, we'd go out on a Thursday night on the, and we'd get a little bit drunk, and then we'd call in sick on the Friday, and then I'd probably call in sick on the Monday. So I probably didn't have the loyalties that I have being self-employed. I mean, you know that I haven't had the best health record over the years, but I've never, ever, ever taken a day off work unless I've been in hospital, even through being at my illest, because my job is my awe and my clients are everything to me and I will never, ever let anyone down. Going back to you walking out from your job, what happens? <laughs> Do you know what? I so I worked my way up into management and to earn extra money in travel you had to go from business to business you wouldn't get the promotions within the same company um I probably wasn't in the right um headspace anyway I was I was with a guy that wasn't brilliant with me and did things that I shouldn't be doing and I um I just had enough and I was a relief person and I used to go into the office because someone was off sick and they'd just throw the work at me and then they'd all be chatting and talking about their weekend while I'd be working like an idiot. 
So one day, and I remember it like it was yesterday, I walked into the main office and they were, it was quite a bitchy environment. It was all women and they were just bitch, bitch, bitch. And I took call after call after call after call. And basically my job was to book business people, their flights, hotels, cars, everything. You know, it was a responsible job. I took booking after booking after booking, got up, packed my stuff and said to them, I'm just going out for lunch. And I never went back. And I rang human resources and told them that I could not bear another day there for my mental health. <laughs> And that was it. And then I thought, oh my God, what am I going to tell my parents? Yeah. I, I bet that was quite scary, especially having a mortgage, not having a job. A lot of people would would really struggle with that. How did you get through it and how did you keep yeah. positive to keep searching for a job? Well, back in, I mean, I keep going back in the days, it's just like if I'm 100 years old, but it was easier for us back in the days to get temp work. I mean, what I did was very irresponsible and, you know, um, but I literally, from the minute I walked out, I knew that I had to get work. I knew that I had to earn so much money and I literally just did temp work. And then I worked behind a bar at a, a judo center. So, did you manage to find work quite quickly or was yeah. there a period of time where you really struggled? No, there was. Um, I refused to sign on the dole, as they called it then, because what I did was irresponsible. So it was my mess and I needed to sort it out. So I just literally took anything. And when I say anything, I was literally, I was, I worked for McVitie's and I was, I was sold it as a sales job and I was going into shops counting how many biscuits were on a shelf and what they needed to order in it made my head frazzled because I went from a very good job to counting biscuits in a shop but it taught me a really really hard lesson that if you're that irresponsible you have to take what you can get and basically that's what I had to do and then um I then got a job with a janitorial supply a company called Unico. And that was really when I realized that I was really good at what I did. You then got a job and then a few years later, you then decided to work for yourself. So I worked for Unico. So I used to work for the Abu Dhabi Royal Family selling toilet rolls. I mean, I've had some really good jobs here, but I loved it. I worked from you know, the palace level, right down to caretaker. But I loved it. I used to work, work at Eton College as well, and um, selling janitorial supplies. Then I got headhunted and it massively went to my head. I was offered 5,000 pounds more. And you know, in those days, that was a lot of money. So cut a long story short, I hated that job, I left that and I was getting into a routine where I was starting the job, leaving it, starting the job, leaving it. And then um, I fell pregnant with Alex. So I literally had Alex and thought, what am I going to do? As much as I love him, and if he watches this, he knows the story. But I'm not a typical mum. I'm not a mum that wanted to stay home. I mean, I work from home, but I wasn't one that could happily sit on the sofa and watch daytime TV. I had to do something. So I piled on the way and um, it was actually my sister who said to me, have you heard of Cambridge Weight Plan? Because she knew that if I lost my weight, it probably would help me go and get another job. So I went and contacted this lady and I was probably three weeks into the job and I walked in and she said to me, oh, I just need to take this call. And I sat there and she wasn't supportive and I looked and I thought you know what this is this is right down my alley I'd love to do this so she walked back in and I asked the question and I said you know how how do I become a consultant and she said come back in two hours and in those days you didn't train I literally signed on the dotted line and that was the last time I heard from her and I was like wow I've got this business I was also doing another two businesses as well. So I was running three businesses together. And this was the only one that actually was making me any money. 
So in 2005, I became a consultant. And in 2006, I was seeing just over 100 clients a week. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of people. I'm a bit of a say, I save people, hence why I'm a, a counsellor. So I like to help people. I like to change people's lives. But unfortunately, my heart got in the way and I fell for a rogue, a massive rogue. And he literally was in the gutter when I met him. And by the time I'd finished saving him, he'd literally left me in the gutter. Hence why I had to move back in with my parents when I was 26, which, yeah, was hard. And mum will admit it. We, we clashed. You know, I'd left home. I'd left home. I was 20, I think, when I left home. So for me to have to go back home and actually I've lost everything that that was that was hard and it was more my pride I didn't want anyone knowing now I don't care who knows I'm very frank with my life do you think that put more like stress on yourself worrying what others thought supposed to concentrating on how you felt massively and that's something I've had to work on over the years you know as a child I was always I'm a big softie, you know me. I'm, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I give everybody my awe, but through my life, I've been bullied and I've been bullied right up into my adult life as well. Um, a lot of it now stems to jealousy, but before, I just think I was a soft touch. I was an easy target and I did worry what other people thought. And now I'm older and I've worked on it. And yes, I've had to go for counselling and, you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit that I think all the qualifications that I've got now in my job, I've probably done as um, for self worth as well. So even though it does really help me massively in my job, it's helped me as well as a person and it's helped me be the person I am today. Definitely. 100%. So for someone watching this, obviously you've worked really hard on not caring what people think. What would you say to them if they are the type of person to let what others say get to them? Okay, number one, the only people that matter are the people that matter. The people that want to talk behind your back, let them talk because you're obviously very interesting and take it as a, take it as a, um, as a compliment. You know, I always worried what people were saying behind my back but I was obviously doing something for people to talk about and it wasn't you've got to turn the negatives to a positive massively and honestly hand on my heart I don't care anymore and I really don't care I you know it's taken me years and years and years of breaking down you know I've I've had when I relocated here, I was bullied so much by a colleague because I was going back to where I lived to work. And I was basically told that it wasn't my area and I, I was to give it up. Um, to the level of I was literally shaking in my lounge, um, but it doesn't happen anymore. If people, people who know me know the real Nikki, people who choose to listen. And I've even had people come up to me a few years ago and say, I'm sorry, I misjudged you. And I'm like, well, don't listen. You know, don't, the people who are jealous, they need to get on with their own lives and worry about what they're doing rather than worrying what other people are doing. So if you are one to take things to heart, don't let it absorb all your energy because it's, a, it's just wasted and negative energy. It really is. You've obviously rebuilt your business now. You're doing really well for yourself. Do you think that's down to having a good support network around you, as opposed to the partner who you were with when you were younger? Oh, my God. Yeah, massively. I mean, if I'd have stayed with the partner that I, I wasted two and a half years with, I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> So, yeah, um, he was a total waste of space. But at the time, I thought I was in love with him and he was he was dangerous. He was I'd always been out with people, 
who I guess I'm quite I'm quite an independent strong person and I think in my younger years I wasn't and I went with people that were a bit wet and this certain person which I'm not going to mention names he was very dangerous but I didn't know how dangerous when I say dangerous I mean weapons but he was just a naughty boy and um I guess I saw a life that I'd never seen before and I thought it was exciting so if I could turn back the clocks would I change anything definitely not because it's made me the person I am today. I'm very independent. Um, you know, Levan, I'm married to a Turkish guy. <laughs> He's not got a typical Turkish wife, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I'm very strong-minded. I'm very, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything, but I would say my past 100%. And I'm proud of what I've, what I've achieved because when I was at school, my my teachers told me that I'd be nothing than a toilet cleaner in Woolworths. They were horrible to me <laughs> because I hated school. I didn't, I was bullied, badly bullied at school. Why, I don't know. I really, to this day, I can't tell you, but I do look back at my bullies. And funny enough, I was telling somebody this earlier and one of my bullies had a horrendous home life, horrendous home life. And I guess she was jealous of my home life, mm -hmm. hence why I was bullied. And I think that has followed me all the way through my adult life is because I am who I am today, people bully me for my success, which is pathetic. And yeah, but I have the last laugh. I have the business I have, so. With being bullied at school, sometimes that can have a knock-on effect in later life. So it's interesting about what you say about caring what others think. Did that stem from being bullied? Probably. Um, I mean, I, I've had quite, I've had quite, um, I had quite a hard childhood, not with my parents, but with what happened. And um, I'm not, I'm not trying to admit I was raped when I was 13 and I was abused by a teacher when I was 14, 15. I couldn't tell you exactly what age. And I think when things like that happen to you, you blame yourself a lot of times. And I think all the time, whenever anything went wrong, I blamed myself for it. And it's only been through the latter part of my life that I've learned to understand differently how you think of things I don't dwell on it at all you know I this happened many years ago and I really don't dwell on it but what it's enabled me to do is help other victims and help other people who have gone through horrible things in their life um, and one thing I never do is judge you know anybody that walks through my door I don't care unless they've gone out and killed someone in plain blood I don't I will not judge anybody for their past everybody has a past it doesn't matter what somebody's past is it what counts is their future you can't there's no point dwelling on the past if I dwelled on my past I'd just be in a corner shaking and rocking probably because I've had a past but that's my past and that's where I'm that's where I need to leave it most definitely. You say about helping others, you now help others on a daily basis with their weight loss. So how's that going? Wow, I love my job. I mean, I do, um, I'm a one-to-one -on -one diet consultant. So that is my main job. I've got a team of um, just over 300 and their annual turnover is just short of two and a half million pounds. Wow. So I don't earn that. I wish I did. But you know what? Little old me or little young me, I am super proud. But I'm also an EFT, so emotional freedom technique practitioner and a neuro linguistic programmer. So NLP practitioner. So I do a lot of work, not just with my weight loss, but I help people with their past mm -hmm. to clear all the negative because it's all to do with your mindset. If you haven't got the right mindset, it doesn't matter what you want to do, whether it's work, 
weight loss, anything, you've got to clear that mindset. And an addiction can be alcohol, drugs, food. So, you know, for what I give my clients, I definitely give 100% more than just the consultant. I'm not just the shake seller. Uh, and I, without sounding big headed, I think that's why I am as successful as I am because I never, there's not a day that I don't talk to my clients. I mean, even when I'm on holiday, I will always talk to them. 11 o'clock at night, if I'm awake and they want to chat, I will WhatsApp. I'm, I'm a workaholic, <laughs> massive workaholic. I you care as well, though. I love it. I love it. And to transform people. And remember, I was there as well, twice. You know, I lost all my weight back in 2006. Then I had a hysterectomy and I went back to my old eating ways. And for years and years, I was fighting that mindset again of wanting to lose my weight. And it was only this year when I got so poorly that I decided, you know, enough's enough. And it was my condition that enabled me to start the weight loss process again. But obviously my mindset has allowed me to finish it. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Finally, I do have 10 very quick questions. Oh my gosh. You're so cruel. <laughs> Are you ready? Go for it. Okay. First one, one tip for a successful business. Never give up. Never, ever, ever give up. Rome wasn't built in a day. Your business doesn't necessarily have to flourish overnight, but as long as you never give up, you will get there. Marmite, love or hate? Love. Favourite book? Oh, Mr. Nice. I wouldn't say it's my favourite, but it's one that I really, it's powerful. Okay. Favourite television programme? Oh, I have many. Um, I'm a celebrity. <laughs> it's on at the moment, so. I love it. I love it. Do you know what? I only watch TV at, at very late at night. I never watch it during the day. So, yeah. Is that because you're working? Because I'm working. <laughs> it is. It's because I just don't. Yeah, I don't stop. I know it's not healthy, but I love it. So I shall continue. <laughs> Jam or marmalade? Jam. Cherry. Ooh. Mm. What's your biggest weakness? I would say before worrying what people thought about me, but I've, I've, I've had therapy <laughs> and I've learned not to worry, but that was definitely a hundred percent my biggest weakness. A hundred percent. Would you say you've got a weakness now? Um, what's my weakness now? I shouldn't smoke. Mm, very true. <laughs> One thing you always take on holiday my phone, <laughs> <laughs> my diary. That's two. Or is your, phone on, is your diary on your phone? Yes. Okay. Um, England or Turkey? Oh, that's really cruel. England. Biggest regret? Letting the bullies affect me. That's a good one. And if you were any animal, what animal would you want to be? A dog. Because I love dogs. <laughs> but I'd have to have a nice owner. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, that's the end of the 10 quick questions. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I've really enjoyed sharing my life with you. What Nikki said about everyone has a past, but it's about the present that counts is so, so, so important for all of us to remember. It's about what you do today that makes a difference. If you have someone that inspires you, comment below. I'm always so interested to find out who others find inspirational. Likewise, if you have an inspirational story to tell or really think that your story could inspire others, comment below drop me a message on social media, or even drop me an email. On Wednesday at five o'clock, I'll be speaking with Big Bopper Entertainment about saving Wicksteed Park. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, comment below, let me know what you think, 
And don't forget to hit subscribe. See you all on Wednesday. Later.